QuickBooks Online 2024 Bank Feeds Matching Receive Payment Form to Bank Feed Deposit. Get ready some coffee and some trail mix because we're hiking on QuickBooks Online, our audit trail to success. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online bank feed practice file we set up in a prior presentation. Let's open those major financial statement reports like we do every time. Reports on the left in the favorites. Right clicking on that balance sheet to open a link in a new tab. Right click in the PL or income statement to open a link in a new tab. The same with the trustee TB, the trial balance. If you don't have that trial balance in the favorites, you can search for it. Let's tab to the right. Close the hamburger and change the range. We're going three months this time. 01, 01, 24, 2, 03, 31, 24. Tab dropping down to see month by month and run it. We'll tab to the right. Repeat the process. Hamburger needs to be closed. Range needs to be changed. 010124 tab. 033124 tab. Drop down months. Run it to refresh it. Uno vase moss. One more time. Close the hamburger. Change the range. 010124 tab. 03. Oh, wait a second. K paso. What happened? 010124 tab. 033124 tab. Select the drop down months, run it to refresh it. Okay, let's go back to the balance sheet. This time we're going to be thinking about more of an accrual system on our revenue cycle, but we're going to see the matching of the bank feed to the receive payment form. Let's go to our flowchart to analyze this again. This is a desktop flowchart. We're thinking for the online uh, system because we're just looking at the flow of the forms for the revenue, sales, income, cycle, whatever you want to call it, the easiest kind of system we would have that we looked at in the past would be one where you just get paid, say, by the YouTube and it hits your bank and you record it with a deposit form with the use and help of the bank feeds. Then we might have a cash register situation, which often makes it a little bit more difficult, especially if we're going to be receiving cash as well as credit cards because we might have to group that in such a way that it will match what goes through with the bank feeds. We'll talk more about that later. Right now we're thinking about an, an accrual system where we have to basically invoice the client for the work done, then track the accounts receivable to try to get paid, and then we make the deposit. So the journal entries involved here would be when we make the invoice after we do the work that increases accounts receivable the other side then goes to revenue and you might have like inventory impacted as well then we need to collect on it and receive the payment so we talked last time about basically a system where you might be able to connect the bank feeds to the invoice which would be easiest to do if you had like even the QuickBooks checking account for the payments. So when you send out an email, for example, you give them the option to pay you with an electronic transfer directly to the checking account. That would be the easiest way to do it so that you can you get all your payments in an electronic format. And then QuickBooks could even help you to basically record the receipt of the payment. But if you don't have the QuickBooks checking, you could still do that by basically when you invoice someone telling them how to pay you possibly with some form of electronic transfer to your checking account, which would then come through the bank feeds. 
And as long as your bank feeds deposit is matching the invoice, you can use the matching concept to record it, which would then record the received payment and put it into your, your bank account, lowering accounts receivable, increasing the checking account. Now, what if you can't do that system? You can't possibly do that system. It might not work well if you're going to receive other types of payments, such as cash, such as credit cards, possibly, and such as having some intermediary platform like a PayPal or like a Stripe or something. Why? Because when you get the payments from the, the customers, these intermediary platforms like a credit card will typically group those payments, might actually take a fee from the payments and then put it into your checking account as a lump sum. Therefore, the lump sum payment that goes into your bank feeds is not going to match uh, what is not going to match up to the invoice easily, and that will cause a problem. So if you're in that situation, if you're receiving payments other than electronic transfers and you have any kind of payment where you have this grouping problem, then you probably want your whole system to be one that's the same, meaning you're going to use the receive payment form to then uh, deposit into undeposited funds, a clearing account, so that you can then deposit yourself using a deposit form and be able to deposit in such a way that it'll match the bank feeds. Okay, so let me show you what I mean here. If we go on over and let's let's run a couple scenarios. So let's say we have an invoice. Let's make an invoice and we're going to say this is going to be for a customer, let's say customer 5 again or let's say 6, customer 6 new customer set it up and we'll say this happens on 0302 uh, 24 so the due date we're going to say is 30 days later and so then we're going to say let's do the same thing with our more complicated transaction that has tax related to it so we're going to sell an inventory item again and we're going to sell one of those tax is being calculated I'm going to adjust the tax to the generic 5%, the generic 5 for our practice problem. So this is going to be an invoice. What's it going to do? It's going to be increasing the accounts receivable, 183.75, increase sales, 175, increase sales tax payable, liability, 875, decrease the inventory by 100, not on the form driven by the item, increase cost of goods sold, by 100 net impact on net income 175 sales price minus the 100 dollars so uh, our concern here is to receive the payment so you could the easiest way like i say is to possibly use the payments for quickbooks use their checking account to set that up and then tell when you email the invoice have them pay it with an electronic transfer directly to your checking account that would be kind of like the easiest thing to do. But you can also do that electronic kind of payment system without their checking account. Just say that you tell your clients how you would like to be paid and, and give them the payment options for you, which would be transfers. But again, if they're gonna pay you with something like cash, then, or a credit card, that could mess up the system. So let's go ahead and say, we're gonna save this. Let's hit the drop down, save it and close it. Let's look at the transaction balance sheet running it. And we know in the accounts receivable for March, if I go into it, we now have our transaction once again for customer number six, 183.75. And then on the, the income statement, we recorded the revenue in the sales. So sale of product for the uh, 175. And then back, the difference is on the balance sheet in the uh, sales tax payable. And inventory went down, which isn't my major focus, but I just show you that the inventory is going down by 100. And the other side's going to cost of goods sold, which is going to be here by the 100. So our concern is tracking the accounts receivable now. Let's go back to the balance sheet. The accounts receivable has a subledger breaking out by who owes us the money. Let's go to the tab to the right. 
right click duplicate that tab so I can just show you that sub ledger and so it's in the reports closing the hamburger scrolling down who owes you we want to think about and see the customer balance detail customer balance detail now we have that customer number six here that owes us money the total amount then 2,383.75 should match out to what's on the balance sheet, 2,383.75. If we track it internally, go into the tab to the left in the sales center or customer center, we could track it looking at all sales and then track the open invoices. So we have our open invoices here. Uh, uh, so then, there, there, I turned it off, there it is on. And then invoices, we could track it here, which is probably the most common place to track it. And we're looking at the unpaid invoices here. We could track it by customer and look at the open invoices by customer. Now we're gonna have to collect on this. If I go into the customer, then I can see in the receive payment that, that uh, the next thing I would do when they pay us would typically be internally receive payment which would then tie out the invoice to the payment that we would receive. Now, again, like we did last time, if we got paid directly into our bank account with an electronic transfer for that exact amount, then I could wait till it clears the bank and the bank feed will see the match and it will do that receive payment form for us possibly. But let's imagine that I'm not gonna, it's not gonna work that way because I have either a credit card or a, a um, cash payment. So let's, let's imagine, for example, I have another transaction that happens, a plus button, an invoice, and we have another invoice, and this will be for customer, let's say number seven, customer seven, tab, and we'll say, duh, duh, there's the customer, and we're gonna say that that's gonna be, I put it in the 24 seven customer, okay. But I'm gonna say, that that's going to happen on let's say uh three two as well and let's say this one was just a service item so we we sold services and let's just say that that was for sixty dollars it's not taxable we don't have sales tax this is just going to increase accounts receivable the other side going to revenue so we'll say let's say that is save and uh close and then if i go to the balance sheet run it now we have in accounts receivable another another 60. It's also in the sub ledger. If I go to the sub ledger and run it, so now we have uh, the added 60 as well. And if I go to the internal documentation, go into the customers and look for the open invoices, we have open invoices for both this customer and this customer. Now, when they pay us, let's say that they're going to pay us like cash or credit cards and the credit card company is going to batch them together before it hits our checking account. Well, in that case, I can't wait till it clears the bank. I'm going to have to say I'm going to receive a payment from customer number six. Let's say it happens on 0304 or let's say 0524. Let's say it's a cash payment and then it's so I so th in this case, I can't put it directly into the checking account, I could, because I could put it directly into the checking account here. And again, if the bank feed was that exact amount, and the date was close, the bank feed would match it out. But, but if I was going to use that method, I might as well match it out to the invoice, right? So, so, uh, so what I'm going to do is instead, I'm going to put it into the clearing account, which used to be called undeposited funds, which is now called payments to deposit. So what's this going to do? It's a receive payment form. That means it's going to decrease the accounts receivable. The other side goes into a cash account, but not necessarily the checking account. In this case, the clearing account, a payment to deposit, and it's attached to the invoice that has been paid. Let's say save and close. So now, if I, if I look at the detail for that particular customer, we can now go into like the customers recently paid. So now it has been recently paid and it was for customer number six, I think, customer number six. 
So if I go into that customer, there's there's the invoice. So if I go into the invoice and look at the tr the trail, it was open, then it was paid, has not yet been deposited. So we have it in the payments to deposit. And then if I was to look at that invoice and edit it, I can see that it is uh, paid here, paid in full, and then it's been attached to this payment form that we created. I can edit that payment form and once again see that it's tied out to that invoice and this is a link to the invoice. So everything's kind of linked together, which is nice. Let's do the same thing for the other payment. So I'm gonna close this out back to the customers and let's look at the open invoices and imagine we also got paid by this one and we're gonna receive a payment and let's say it was on 040524 cash payment and then again i'm putting it into see how the default now is going into the payments to deposit if you use this account you probably want to use it with every receive payment form so that you're not toggling back and forth between the checking account and the payment to deposit because i think that would be an area you, that can cause errors this will once again reduce the accounts receivable and record the cash going into the clearing account let's save it and close it if i look at it internally same kind of thing the invoice has now uh, opened paid not yet deposited so where did it go let's go to the balance sheet those two transactions run it uh, decrease the accounts receivable so the accounts receivable goes uh, down by so there's the 183 i'm not sure i picked the right date on the on the $60 one, what did I put on the date? Let's go internally and say uh, on, I put it on four five. Let's see if I can edit that one. Let's say it was on uh, three five, right? That's what we were trying to do here. Three five, save and close. Okay, sorry about that. Back to the balance sheet, run it. Okay, so now in the accounts receivable, we've got these two, transactions here decrease in the AR accounts receivable should just go up with invoices and down with payments all the time the sub ledger should be adjusted so those are removed from it so the sub ledger still matches 2002 2002 the other side of the transaction it goes into the payment to deposit account here so we have in here the 60 and the 18375 so now let's go back Okay, so now let's imagine what's going to clear what's going to clear the bank. If we have a credit card that's grouping those payments together or if we are making the deposit of cash into the checking account, it's going to hit the checking account as one lump sum, not as two amounts. So let's show that by making a bank feed over here. So we'll say date and we'll say this is going to be amount and dis Description. The date, let's say, is on three, what did we say? 524. Amount, we're going to say it's for the full amount that's going to hit it, 243.75. So 243.75 description is going to be cash deposited, you know, because we're going to imagine we went and deposited or the credit card. If it was a credit card, it would be a, a deposit from the credit card on the bank feeds. Let's save that and da, 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 save it, file, save as. I'm gonna save it as a CSV so we can upload it as though it came through the bank feeds. So I'll save it and close it. And then if I go back to the first tab, we're gonna go to the hamburger, transactions, close the hamburger, and then bring this in, upload from file, find that file there it is 445 that's the number of the presentation if you want to look it up and use it yourself if you have access to it it's going to be the checking account that it's going to go into and then we're going to say continue it's yes one column that's the format of the date 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 description description amount amount looks good continue there it is let's pull that one in and continue yes and done all right so so now if we look at that one so there's the cash deposited 
notice that it's it didn't just match it up to those two received payments because the received payments have two forms that hit our system in one lump sum. So if I go into this one, for example, I could go to my matching. And then for some reason, it's only showing one of the, the payments here. But the idea is that I could check them off down here to tie out to the balance. But I don't want to have to do that over here on, on the deposit side of things. When I'm looking at the bank feeds, it would be easier for me to take care of things internally if I have to deal with something like this. So for example, let's close this out. And then I'm going to record the deposit on our side and and then group it properly. And then the bank feeds should pick it up. So if I go to the balance sheet over here and I say that that I, at the end of the day, I take the money and I deposit into the bank, I'm going to make the transaction of that 243.75 that's going into the bank with the help and use of a deposit form. So if I go to the first tab and I select the drop down and I deposit it instead of waiting until it clears the bank with a deposit form, you can see in here, it shows me those two payments. And if I group them together, it's gonna to be deposited as a lump sum of 243.75. Now, if you dealt with a credit card, you might have to check those off and also deal with the fact that the credit card might batch your payments and charge you a fee, which you might have to put an expense down here of a bank fee and then say that that's gonna be like whatever, $5 that they charged you, $6, so that you get the deposit to tie out to what's actually gonna hit your bank account, right? But we don't have to do that here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove that. Say we deposited 243.75. What's this gonna do? Increase the checking account uh, by the this amount, 243.75, instead of this and this, and then it's gonna decrease the clearing account back down to zeros. Let me change the date first, however, back to March 5th. All right, so then, okay, let's do it. Let's go save it and close it. And then if I go to my balance sheet, we're gonna say run it. And then in March, we should have a deposit of that amount, the 243.75. It's hitting in one lump sum instead of in two amounts. And then the payment to deposit has gone back down uh, to zero. So back down to zero on that one. Okay. So then I'm going to go back. And then if I go to my bank account over here in the transactions for the bank feeds, I'm going to refresh the screen. I didn't even have to refresh it. It picked it up. See, now it matches it out. So that's, that's typically the process that we would have. And now it can see it because if I, if I go to find the matches, it's picking up that deposit uh, form easily. So that's how you basically want. So I'm going to, I'm going to, do you want to leave without saving? I'll say, yeah, that's how we basically want to do it oftentimes. So the bottom line is if I look at my flow chart, we can possibly match the, the bank fee deposit to the invoice. If the invoice amount will be the same amount that clears the bank, you could receive the payment manually and then deposit that directly into the checking account and try to match that to the bank feeds. But if you're going to do that, you might as well just do the, you know, match it to the invoice. If you have a system where you have to deal with credit cards or cash payments, then you're, you might have, a, you might have multiple receive payments and even sales receipts where they're cash or credit card. And in which case you could try to tie out the bank feed to the receive payment forms. But to do that, you would have to use the matching feature on the bank feeds, which would be difficult and not usually the best way to do it. If you find yourself doing that, then the, the workaround, what you need to do typically is use the undeposited funds, meaning you're going to manually record the receive payments as well as the sales receipts, as we'll see in a future presentation, directly into undeposited funds or deposit funds to be deposited and then use the deposit form not through the bank feeds, but actual deposit form to properly group the transactions to your checking account in the same format as they will be grouped from the credit card company or when you make cash deposits so that when you do the bank feeds, you're not actually going to record a transaction. You're just going to match the transaction here, uh, but it will be the easy thing to do on the bank feeds, right? That's going to be the idea. So we match it and there we go. 
All right, let's just take a look at our trial balance to see where we stand at this point in time. This is where we're at. So if you're following along, uh, then uh, if your numbers tie out to these numbers, great. If not, then it might be a date range issue. You might increase the date and then drill down on the numbers that differ and uh, possibly to the source document and change the date.